Hi everybody, the other day I went to the dollar spot at Target and I picked up some school supplies and if you want to see all the things that we got, you can click here for that video. It'll open up in a whole new window so you won't lose out on what I'm going to do next and I'll have that link in the description below. But I got all these really great things but it came in packaging that I couldn't use for storage and so I want to show you some of the things I decided to do. This is the only thing that came in a really nice canvas bag. These are felt letters that my daughter already has really enjoyed playing with and so I thought that I would make some bags as well and this was my attempt at making bags for some of the other supplies that uh, I thought would work well to be put in a bag but I'm not sure I want to keep it that way so I want to show you guys um, a couple of different ways that you guys can store this. and here's one for the um, puzzle pieces with the numbers on them. So I don't know that I'm gonna keep it this way. It's a little hard to get in and out of. And so um, the other thing that I did was I thought that I could have these kind of be like file folder games. And I decided I would use like these kind of folders instead because they have a pocket and they also have um, this thing right here. And I was considering putting one activity in each folder so that in the future, if I decide to do like a workbox system, they could all be by themselves, like each one. But it would be great if I could have something kind of like this. This is like a nice pocket and Velcro shut. And it's a good size and it has the three hole punch here. And then that could fit into here really well. And that way I could store one activity per folder. However, I only had one of these. So then I went to work thinking how I could maybe make my own and I came up with this system over here. And this is a sheet protector, an eight and a half by 11 sheet protector. And I think it worked out really well. And plus I like that it's completely clear. This one, I mean, this is fine too. It's just frosted green, but I actually like that this is completely clear. And this will probably end up being like 10 cents a piece. I don't know how much these cost. I was gonna go over to the dollar store and see if I could find them. However, I thought this, this whole setup might be nice too, because if I ever wanted to add some worksheets that go along with this activity, I could put them here. And I also thought for the other activities that have the closed pins, it might be nice to store them like this. So this is basically a sheet protector that I cut down. It was a full size sheet protector like this. And I cut, I cut it down, I cut off the front part, and then I scored it so that I would have a nice a good fold and then I hot glued a bit of velcro here and it works really well it does not come out at all and it's easy to open and close and it's easy to get these things out and plus I like that you can see it okay so I'm putting you on fast forward here so I can walk you through this process the first thing you want to do is score through both pieces of the sheet protector and I went over this a couple of times to make sure that it was nice and scored. Then you want to trim both sides of the sheet protector but you want to make sure that you leave that strip so that it can still go into a three ring binder. Um, next you're going to just fold back both pieces just to make sure that it's nice and bendable and now we want to cut just the front flap and I prefer doing this with my exacto knife but you can certainly do it with a pair of scissors. Then you want to start by cutting the right side, just a little um, triangle piece out so that we can make like an envelope flap. And you want to start with the right side first so that you can take that little piece, put it on the left side, and use it as a template to cut the other piece out. So now we have our flap in place, just making sure that it closes well. And then we want to hot glue a little piece of Velcro to the um, inside flap. Now you don't want to use too much glue because you don't want it to ooze out, but you do want to cover all four corners so that it doesn't end up tearing up after repeated use. Then I'm just going to put the hot glue on the other piece 
and then you want to carefully close it shut. You only get one chance to do this, so you want to make sure that you get it in the right place. And you don't want to open it up until it's fully cooled down and the glue is set. Okay, now I want to put the whole project inside the pocket and with the paper clips around them, or rather the clothespins around them, it didn't quite fit inside the pocket. So I took the clothespins off, put them all on a small piece of cardstock, and then put the whole thing inside the pocket and it worked perfectly. Okay, so I finished making all the pockets for these projects or these activities I got from Target. So the first one I already showed you and then the rest of them kind of vary in size. Now this one's the bulkiest of all of them. They have the puzzle pieces in them, but it actually works pretty well. I'm pleased with the way it turned out. It, it turned out better than the little canvas bag that I made for it because I had made it a little bit too narrow and it was really hard for the puzzle pieces to come in and out. So I'm happy with this one. And then this one, I divided up the colors for the um, tangrams because when they were all clumped together, I found that my kids weren't enjoying them as much. And so if we want to use them as tangrams, it's better that we have just one set at a time, although they could mix them up if they decided they want to do something else with them. And then here's the one where you use the paper clip to match up to the image with the letter. And so I just put this here. I mean, you could put it inside too. I'm not sure what it's going to work out, you know, better as far as long-term storage. But this is how I'm doing it right now. And then for this one, I just got a little piece of cardstock here to put all of the paper clips on it because when I put them around the um, this little counting circle, they didn't all fit inside very well. So I just have this over here. And of course, I could also put them on the side here. So this is what I'm doing right now with them. I haven't actually put these into my schoolroom to use them. So we'll find out how well they hold up in about a month or so. So I didn't have enough of these folders here for all of the tangrams. So for this one, I just have three sets together and they each, you know, are in their own little pocket here. And then for this last one, I just have two sets in here. So I decided not to put them all into a three ring binder. This is that nice large one that could probably accommodate multiple um, of these file folders. I decided that I wanted to keep them all separate so that, like I said, in the future, if I do a work box system, I find this to be a little bit easier. Now, the only thing that I am debating on what to do is to add a label to the front or a tab to the side in order for me to know what's inside. And I have these little tabs here that I could put a little label on and then put it directly onto the little um, plastic, the plastic pocket. Oh. There we go. And I could staple it in place or I could glue it in place. That way if I'm storing them this way, I can see um, what's inside. Or the other option is just to file them by subject. So all the ones for math can be filed together in one folder that you know that when, you, when you've got them in a hanging file, there's already a place for a tab and it can just say math or language arts or whatever. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please let me know in the comments if you end up trying something similar please share pictures with me. I love to see what you guys are doing. All right, thanks for watching.